Welcome to this series of mini videos where we're going to be exploring and unpacking research philosophy in more detail. In this first video we're going to recap some of the key concepts which are important to understand as they underpin research philosophy and the justification of the research philosophy which you select to underpin and inform your own research. There are some key concepts which underpin the research philosophy which you will select to underpin your research in order to achieve the research aim and answer your research questions. These key concepts relate to beliefs and assumptions within research and thus will influence the most efficient and effective research philosophy for your own research. The first key term is ontology. Ontology is concerned with the nature of the social world and what can be known about it. Within ontology, we can consider there to be two poles at either end. On one side we have a realist ontology and a realist ontology believes and posits that there is only one reality and our job as a researcher is to discover this reality. On the other end of the spectrum we have a nominalist ontology and here we believe there are different realities constructed by different people. So within our research, we have to consider whether our research aim inherently believes and assumes there's a realist ontology and our job is to find that one reality that exists, or there's a nominalist ontology and there's these multiple realities constructed by different people and therefore our role is to explore these different realities, however many there might be, to try and understand what realities there are and how they relate to one another. The next key term which influences and underpins research philosophy is epistemology. Epistemology is concerned with the nature of knowledge and how it can be acquired. And our understanding of this informs our view as to what constitutes good and effective knowledge. So within epistemology, again, we can consider there to be two poles at the end of a spectrum. Within this example, we consider these two poles to be positivist and interpretivist views of good knowledge. Now at the positivist pole, good knowledge can be considered to be objective data facts and figures. And within this view, knowledge is testable and results can be retested because the data is objective data. If we take this objective data, we can test it and we'll always get the same results, no matter who does the testing or on what day we do the testing. At the other end of the spectrum, we could consider the interpretivist view whereby good knowledge and data is often considered to be subjective as it is interested in participants' opinions, views, attitudes and beliefs. And in order to extract this kind of information, it is commonly co-created as an interviewer or someone collecting this kind of subjective data 
will need to probe and ask questions to get this subjective information from the participant. And because of this, the subjective data and results might vary. If we have different interviewers, we might find that the way in which they ask for questions or probe and the timing of such probe brings out different data and information. Or even if we have the same interviewer and the same interviewee, if we ask the same questions but on different days or in different contexts or situations, we might find that the participant gives different information to those same questions to the same interviewer. So there is an element of subjectivity within this data set. But interpretivists would consider this to be good because they are interested in this subjectivity and these other factors around us. Now, we can make links between the ontology and the epistemology. And essentially, we could draw two methodological pathways at either pole. Those who view the world with a realist ontology and believe there is one true reality, or at least have a research problem or aim which is seeking to find one reality, will likely to have a positivist epistemology because they will be seeking objective data to find that one reality. Whereas those who view the world with a nominalist ontology and believe there to be multiple realities are more likely to have an interpretivist epistemology and will believe that subjective data is good. As in order to find these multiple realities, they will want multiple subjective accounts of people's beliefs, opinions or attitudes. So through this we can see that you'd commonly expect there to be a link between the ontology and the epistemology selected within a piece of research. The assumptions which we have about the world and research within our research aim in terms of our ontology and epistemology will then need to align with the research philosophy which we select. One more key term which is important to understand when considering research philosophy is axiology. An axiology is the researcher's view of the role of values in research. In this case, we're talking about the values of the judgment and the role of the researcher in the research process. So as we discussed before, with a realist ontology, we'll be looking for objective data. So as a researcher, we'd want to remove ourselves away from the data collection to try and increase the objectivity. Whilst when it comes to a nominalist ontology, we understand that the researcher will likely need to co-create the data or at least be involved in that data collection process, which means that the researcher will be involved in the data collection process. So this is how our ontology can influence the axiology and the researcher's view of the role of the researcher's values within the research. And what we find is that the beliefs and assumptions which we've discussed in this video in terms of the ontology, epistemology and axiology will influence the research philosophies which we select, but will also influence the research design, 
And these three things will all influence each other, which leads us to having to follow a reflexive process as a researcher. As if there's misalignment between these three things, issues can arise with the quality of the research. In the next video, we will consider the role of research philosophies and we will consider the opposing philosophical views and beliefs within positivism and interpretivism.